All right. So we're gonna we're gonna write a method eventually where we're gonna draw a line. Um, the syntax for defining a method we're gonna get to later. Okay. So if you're like, why are we choosing this words? I don't understand that yet. That is totally expected. So we're gonna say public static void draw line. And what all those words mean, we'll worry about later. We're going to define the terms, classes, objects, and variables. And this is a little bit tricky because these are fairly abstract and generic concepts, and they're interrelated. Um, so kind of hang in there. I think by the time we have definitions for all three, we'll be comfortable with those definitions but they're gonna be incomplete as we like build them out here. So let's start with a multi-line comment. So slash star enter in Blue Jay. And here is admittedly my pretty lame definition for an object. Objects are entities in a program. And if you're like entity is the most generic word you could possibly choose. Yeah, you're right. Object is a pretty a generic concept as well. Yeah. Um, I bet there is a way to define it more specifically. I have yet to come across or come up with it yet. Um, but I think as we build this out, we're going to have a good picture of it here in a moment. The important thing is like what, what does an object have? I think that's more important. So objects have attributes. Let's focus on turtles. That's a shared experience we all have in common here. Turtles, turtle objects have attributes. They have a pen color. They have an X position. They have a Y position. They have an orientation. They have a pen width. Those are the attributes of a turtle object. Objects also have, or objects are manipulated, manipulated not in a bad way, but manipulated by invoking methods. So it's not just that a turtle has a pen color, it's that we can manipulate the turtle object by telling it to go forward, or turn right, or change its pen color. Okay. So objects have attributes, objects are manipulated by invoking methods. This is where our definitions are going to be a little incomplete until we kind of get to near the end of this lesson. But if we look up at some of the code we had previously, we've created some objects up here and we'll focus on the syntax of this whole new thing. But we created a new turtle on this line of code and we created a new world on this line of code and, and this equal sign um, is not equality like it is in math class. We call it the assignment operator in Java, meaning it's, it's, it's basically saying take the value of the thing on the right and store it on the thing on the left. And we'll get into that in a little more detail in, in a moment as well. So we did create a world object here and we created a turtle object here and we stored something in this variable ocean and this variable crush. And so for now, and we'll build on this, but for now, in our notes here, just as examples, we'll say ocean and crush are variables that reference objects. I'm going to try to be very careful with my word choice today and early on through this semester um, and avoid saying things like crush is an object. Because technically that's not true, and this is what we're going to be exploring today. Crush is a variable. It references an object, but it is not an object. Um, and that distinction is important, and that's going to be the focus of like today's lesson. All right, what else we got here? Let's compare and contrast objects to classes. So classes describe a collection of objects. 
you can think of a class as like a blueprint for an object. Okay. When we make a new object, we have to specify on which class it should be based. Which blueprint do we use to build the new object? So all objects of a class have the same behavior, meaning they have the same methods. All turtle objects can move forward. All turtle objects can turn left. That's what makes them a turtle. So all objects of the class have the same methods, same behavior. And they have the same type of attributes. All turtle objects have a pen color. All turtle objects have a pen width. All turtle objects have an orientation. What direction are they pointed? Here's the really important part, though. But they may have different values for those attributes. So while all turtle objects have a pen color, one turtle object might have a red pen color and another turtle object might have a blue pen color, okay? which is exactly what we want. And in fact, later on in this unit, when we do more with turtles, we're going to create multiple turtles so that they can have different attributes and be at different locations on the screen and draw on different colors. We want all that. That's the power of object-oriented programming, is that we can create multiple objects based on the same class that have different values for their attributes. So as an example, world and turtle are classes. We get that through the syntax clues. They start with capital letters. Um, and we're also going to look at a moment how we can get that through our, our uh, more semantic clues. Let's create two objects. So I want to do I want to have two lines of code here creating two different objects from two different classes just so we can understand what's similar and what's different. And we're going to dissect these two lines like in detail. The first one is going to say world ocean equals new world. And the second line of code is going to say turtle crush equals new turtle and then in parentheses ocean. And we'll put a comment before the turtle one here. So these are two statements that create two different objects. The first statement creates a new world object. The second statement creates a new turtle object. And so we're going to focus on the, the syntax um, of these two statements to better understand how we create objects. The key thing I want us to focus on, and I really like this aspect of Java, is this word new. Okay. Um, so we, oops, we use what we call the new operator. We'll define the term operator formally later, but it's called the new operator. It's a Java reserved word. That's why it shows up in red. We use the new operator to construct um, other verbs that we, synonyms we might use here, we might say create or instantiate an object. I will usually say we are constructing an object, and there's a reason for that. It's going to reinforce the concept we're going to learn in our next unit. Um, but at times I might slip and say instantiate because historically that's what I'm used to. Um, sometimes objects are actually called instances. Um, I'll try not to use those terms, just to keep things clear. So we use the new operator to construct a new object. I like the way that reads. Make a new world, make a new turtle. I like the use of new. Um, students often forget new until they get used to it. So if your code doesn't compile and you're trying to make a new turtle, 
or a new whatever, make sure you actually have the word new in there. Okay, we got to have the word new. All right, let's keep dissecting the right side of the statement. So we got the word new. The next thing here is turtle. The class of the object is specified immediately after the new operator. For example, in this case, turtle. I want a new, I want a new what? I want a new turtle. Great, here's a new turtle object. So the class name is immediately after the new operator. Sometimes when we create a new object, we can simply say, hey, I want a new world, and we get a new world object. We're done. Piece of cake. Sometimes when we create a new object, we need to specify additional information. Hey, I want a new turtle. Oh, that's cool. Where do you want the turtle to live? Oh, yeah, I got to tell you that. I want it to live in, in this world object referenced by this ocean variable. Okay, cool. We'll put the turtle in there. So, if we need to pass additional information to construct the object, arguments, we're back to arguments again, arguments are specified in parentheses after the class. Now note, we always have the parentheses. If we have no additional information, there's nothing in between the parentheses, but we still need the parentheses. Okay, that syntax is important. Java depends upon that. If we do have additional information, that additional information goes between the parentheses after the class name. And that's how we create new objects. New world, new turtle. Yeah, William. Ah, yeah. So, um, like in Python and Java, we have to like import classes if they're not built into the Java standard library um, or defined by the language. That is something we're going to learn. Um, but to make our lives easier in this very first unit, I used a BlueJ trick to automatically import all the classes we need. That's why there's this plus libs folder in your um, repository. BlueJ automatically loads all those Java classes, so we don't have to import them. But we will learn about importing starting in our, our next unit. So it's just a simplification for now. Excellent question. So we've been focusing on the right side of these statements. Let's focus on the left side. So we talked a little bit of the equal sign we call the assignment operator. It says take the value of the thing on the right, assign it to the thing on the left. Well, let's take a moment to focus on what is the thing on the left. The thing on the left here is a variable. And that is something we've talked about, but we've never actually defined. So let's, let's have a, an example here. So let me write int width and then width equals 20. And then above this, we'll do a little comment. Variables store values to be used later. A the, the idea of a variable is a fundamental example of an abstraction in terms of the computational thinking that we were talking about earlier this week. That's an abstraction you've used in math class for years. Right? X equals something. Y equals something. F of X equals this equation. Right? Whatever it happens to be. You've used this idea of a variable over and over again in math. S abstract from a conceptual perspective, very similar in, in programming languages. It's a way to assign a value and later change that value stored in that variable. So variable store values to be used later. In Java, Java is what we call a strongly typed programming language. 
For those of you familiar with Python, Python is not a strongly typed programming language. If we're writing Python code, I can just say width equals 20. And Python's like, cool, sounds good, off we go. In Java, the very first time we use a variable, we have to declare it with its type. We have to give Java a heads up and say, hey Java, I want to use this variable called width, and I'm going to store in there an integer number. So its type is an int. Or hey Java, I want to use this variable crush, but its type is going to be a turtle. It's going to reference a turtle object. That takes some getting used to if you're familiar with languages that are not strongly typed. Okay? So in Java, variables have a type. For example, int in this case, or like turtle up above. They also have a name. For example, width in this case, or crush up above. Format this a little bit nicer. And they have a value. For example, 20. Or I'm not quite sure what up above. We'll get into that in a second. When we say int width, this is the syntax for declaring, declare, declaring a variable. When we say width equals 20, this is us assigning a value to a variable. So I just want to be clear about what we mean by declaring a variable. That's where we specify its type and what we mean by assigning a value to it. In reality, um, we do both of these often at the same time. So I can say like int x position equals 50. And this would be an example of declaring and assigning a value to a variable. Often we do both at once. Not always, but often. 